Hello, I'm Ross, I work at Rive, and today I'm going to be talking about data binding. Now, data binding allows you to bind elements of your designs to things called view model properties. And you can change view model properties in real time. For instance, here I have a fighter card, and I've bound the character animation to a view model property called fighter art. And this gives me a drop down and lets me pick which fighter is visible. I've also bound the fighter name to this string property, so I can just call it whatever. And I've bound this number, so I can control this in real time. You can even control color properties. So now, if I export this Rive file and import it into a game engine, all of these properties are exposed to the developer who can control them at runtime, meaning that we can use this Rive file as part of our game UI without the need to design any of this inside the game engine itself. So let me show you how to set up this file using data binding. First of all, we have a bunch of characters and all of them are in their own individual components. We also have a component for the background. Why do these all have to be components and not just artboards? Well, components can be nested into other parts of your projects. So in this artboard, I have nested one of the character components, the background, and I have some text set up using layouts. If I highlight my character component, I can go up here, you'll see that we get a drop down, and we can pick which component we want to use. Now, in order to bind these various layers to view model properties, we first need to highlight our artboard and go up to the top right and create a new view model. This automatically binds view model one to our artboard. And if we go over to our data panel, you can see view model one here. We can now give view model one various properties. The first property I'm going to give it is an artboard property, and I'm going to call it fighter art. Now, an artboard property gives you a selection of all components and artboards in your project. I'm just gonna set its initial value to fighter pink. And I can now go into my hierarchy, select my fighter, and then go to its source and right click and select data bind. Now I can select the property fighter art from my view model. We are now taking in the fighter art property and its property value and using that to control the source. So if I press play, the source gets set to fighter pink. And I can change this if I go up to data. Now I'm going to give the view model a string property and I'll call it fighter name. And I can go into my hierarchy Go to the fighter name text run and up here I can right click on the text run, data bind, and we'll take in the fighter name view model property. If I go into my data panel and highlight the view model, you'll see that the fighter name's initial value is set to initial value. I'm just going to set it to player one as its initial value. And now when I press play, it says player one. Next up, I'm going to give view model one a number property and I'll call this num rank and I'll go into my hierarchy, go down to the number ranks text run, right click data bind and we'll take in num rank. However, as you know, the num rank property is a number. So we are currently using a number to control a string. And in Rive, we can't actually do this. What we need to do is first convert that number into a string, and only then are we able to use it to control the text run. So we need to go back into the data panel, press plus up here, and create a converter string 
convert to string. Then we can go over here into its inspector and we can round the decimals and remove trailing zeros. Then go back into your hierarchy, down to your text run, right click, update bind, and we can add the converter. So now we're taking in the num rank number property, we're converting it to a string, and then using that string to control this text run. So when I press play, if we go into our data panel, highlight the view model, I can go over here and change the number in real time. And finally, I can add three color properties. Duplicate, duplicate. I'll call the first one BG color name, this one BG color rank, and this one BG color. As you can see, color properties can be set to any color that you want. You can even adjust the alpha as well. If I go into my hierarchy and highlight my fighter name, I can go over here and scroll down. I can see that it is this color that's controlling the background on this text. So I can right click, data bind, and then select the background color name property. Then we can press play, go over to our data panel, highlight the view model, and we can change this. And of course we can do the same with the color rank background color and the background color itself. So that's that for a very quick introduction to data binding. It's a very powerful tool and if you want to learn more then continue watching our data binding playlist.